In this tutorial, we will be adding an overworld NPC to our game. First, let's open up our emulator. Once we've done that, open up Nitro Explorer 2B. Now we're going to choose the ROM that we're going to hack. Since we're hacking BW2, we're going to have to extract A126 and A048. Uh, I'll post those two in the description, but we're going to have to extract both of these because they're the overworld entities and the overworld sprites. Alright, now that we have both extracted, let's start the game and the emulator so that we can find out where we will add our NPC. For tutorial purposes, let's pick a relatively simple area. A good place to start would be inside a house. Yeah, we should be good here. Okay, pause the emulator and load up the script that I've provided. This script will give us the info on the current files that are being used. This will help us find out which exact file we're going to have to edit. Resume the game, and then press and hold the R button, and then let go. The Lua script console tells us that the game is using overworld file 125 with one piece of furniture, two NPCs, one warp, and no triggers. Open up editor exe so that we can unpack the overworld narc. Drag and drop the overworld narc into the programs window, and then open up the narc. Click the checkbox so that we can extract all of the overworlds, then press the far left button so that it will all extract. As it extracts, a new folder will be created with all of the overworld files. Let's open up the folder with all the overworld files. The Lewis script told us that the game was using overworld file 125, so let's open that one up in our hex editor of choice. So, now that we've opened up file 125 as the Lewis script told us, let's briefly go over the structure of the file. The first 8 bytes of the overworld is its header. The fourth byte corresponds to how many pieces of furniture there are. The fifth byte for how many NPCs there are. The sixth for how many warps. And the seventh for how many triggers. These first 8 bytes comprise the header. The data after the header is the overworld data. The length of this data is stored in the first 4 bytes of the header. With that in mind, let's isolate the NPC data. The script tells us the range the NPC's data occupies, so let's go ahead and select it. Go ahead and create a new file, just so we can see the NPC data. Paste in the data that we selected. Since each NPC uses 0x24 bytes, change the bytes per row in the hex editor. This results in showing us the two NPCs, one on top of the other. Since we are adding an NPC, let's go ahead and add a new row by hand. Start off by calling it NPC2, as the first NPCs are 0 and 1. Next, we have to assign a sprite. To figure out which hex value we should assign, let's start up Kaza Wars BWOE. Open up the overworld sprite narc that we extracted and choose a sprite. Let's choose Skyla.
Since the first six files are blank, we must subtract six from the number in BWOE to get our actual sprite number. If you were to add a Pokemon sprite as an overworld, this method won't really work. There's a certain trick to this which I won't really cover in this video. So now that we've chosen 5A as our sprite, it's time to do the rest. Movement permissions are how much we're going to allow the NPC to move. Let's just choose looking around randomly. Now set the next two bytes to zero like you would for the other NPCs. These are just unknown data. Only define an overworld flag if you don't want the NPC to appear if the flag is set. We're making, these, we're making this NPC appear always, so just set them to zero. For the script called, let's just use the second NPC's script, which is script 01. For face direction, let's have her start facing up. A sight range is only used for trainers. Set both of these bytes to zero. The next four bytes are zero, as NPCs don't use these. For the down leash and left right leash, set these both to zero. Now set the next four bytes to zero because we don't know what they do. For the placement of our NPC, let's go in game to find the coordinates on where we should place it. Let's place her up in the corner. The Lua script shows us that she is at X. 0, 7, and Y, 2. Be sure that you convert your decimal coordinates to hexadecimal. 7 and 2 are the same thing in decimal as they are in hex, so it's not really needed, but if you were to have numbers that were pretty big, then you'd need to convert them. Now add two more zeros, and since the NPC is not going to be levitating, we're just going to have that set to zero. Put them on the floor. So now that we're done with our new NPC, let's go ahead and select everything and paste it back into the overworld file. Just go ahead and overwrite the existing NPC data, and now we actually have to correct the header because we changed the overworld data. We have to increment the uh, overworld NPC count by 1, so 2 becomes 3, and now we have to actually find the length of the file now. So we go ahead and select everything after the header, and that length gets written to the first 4 bytes. So in our example, 0x98 gets written to the first four bytes. To check our work, let's go ahead and start off with the original length, which was 0x74. Uh, since we added 24 bytes, we go and add 20, 0x24. So 0x74 plus 0x24 is 0x98. Now that all of our edits are done, let's save the file. Next, we have to reinsert the file into the NARC itself, and then the NARC will have to be put back into the ROM. So to reinsert the file, we use PPNFR, NARC File Replace, to add the file back into the NARC. Go ahead and select the overworld NARC that we extracted in the first place, and then scroll down to File 125, that's the file we're going to replace. Now we choose the file that's going to replace that file. So, and choose file 125. It'll take a second, and once we're done with that, we can close out and open up Nitro Explorer 2B. Let's go ahead and close out of some windows. Be sure to make a backup of your ROM, so in my case, I'm just going to create a new copy of the ROM and just name it appropriately. So this is the ROM that we're going to be inserting the new NARC into, the edited NARC. So open it up in Nitro Explorer 2B. 
navigate to A126 and reinsert the edited overworld narc. Once it's reinserted, we are good to go, so open up the new ROM in the emulator. Be sure you have the anti-piracy code active if you don't want to get freezes, and in your case, you probably want to add the new save file, just to start off at a certain place. All right, it's time to go check to see who is inside this building. All right, let's pause quick. You can see she's facing up, as we specified at the start. The other two NPCs, uh, one of them was set to look to one direction and the other one was set to look down. And as you can see, they do that right at the start before they do their movement. The middle NPC doesn't move at all. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, Skyla, she's there. She's fully interactable. You can bump into her, you can talk to her. She uses the script from, I think, the boy NPC. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you wanted to assign a special script, you'd have to write your own, then edit the script file and assign it to her, rather than use an old script, or the same script as another NPC. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You've added an overworld to your game. Now just for kicks, let's go ahead and check the script file to see our changes. So open it up again and you can see, hey, there's three NPCs this time and we made all of our edits properly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So congratulations on adding an NPC and see you next time.